Welcome to the next project. This is episode 7 of our Goodwill Fender Starcaster Extreme Modification Project Series. When I say Starcaster, this is really like a Fender clone of a Fender Strat. But we're messing it up. We're taking it apart and making it better than it was. Uh, in this episode, we got a lot of little things going on. Some neck work again, uh, a lot of body work going on. Have the body, all the routing done, all the finish sanding done, um, and prep for color. We are applying some stain to the top and putting a hard, uh, what is this, uh, polyester sealer filler, easy sanding sealer on the whole thing. So before I blab anymore, let's cut right to it and start the next project. I was having one of those days when I saw something and it made my eye twitch. It was factory holes that were drilled and then plugged. Well, they were in the wrong place. And then new holes were drilled in the wrong place. And nothing really belongs. So, I'm taking it upon myself to try to get a little bit closer to where things should be. I used the neck plate to help locate where the holes would be drilled and I used some of the dowels to help hold the neck plate in place while I was drilling. Now I mark depth of the holes on a couple of the dowels, actually all of the dowels, and just gluing them in place, putting down a little protective tape and using a small pull saw to level everything off. Letting it dry, going after it with a sharp chisel, which is a change, and uh, just cleaning it up and really this is something I should have done a month ago or more. I just couldn't help myself. I had other things to work on and uh, when it came time I couldn't resist. It had to be done. Putting the neck in place and using the neck plate as well marking everything, doing a lot of measuring. Measure, measure, re-measure, double check. Just want to make sure I get my holes drilled in the right place. Using a brad point bit, setting the depth of the drill bit so it won't go all the way through the neck pocket. Only the tip of the brad will poke through. And this is so I don't blow out the other side. Now I'm cleaning up the hole, opening it up on the pocket side, and test fitting the neck. Here I'm using the brad tip of the bit to mark where the holes need to be drilled. Again, a depth stop is set so I don't drill through the fingerboard. Yes, that could happen. Pre-threading using some of the neck screws and some super glue to help petrify the holes just to make the wood really hard and a quick uh, assembly. It's looking good. Using one of my templates from a couple episodes ago to cut the ledge where the new control cavity cover will rest. That sounds pretty serious. What good does a cavity cover ledge do if you don't have a cavity cover? So I'm cutting one out. I didn't have any pick guard material, but I did get a piece of Kydex, which is uh, a plasticky material quite often used for making uh, holsters for handguns or sheaths for knives, things like that. So I cut it out. Here I have it in place, drilling all my holes, pre-threading the holes, and I'll be following that up with a little super glue once again to toughen up the threads that are now in the wood and don't run screws back in there right away. You gotta let that CA dry out. Otherwise you'll bond your screw right into the hole. Yes, I've done that. Okay. 
Couldn't resist, but there's more sanding to be done. And I love sanding. I really do. I do, really. This is getting close to, well, no, it's not really getting close to being the final bit of sanding I need to do. There's going to be more. There's always more sanding. Oh, and a little chisel work, too. I had forgotten to round off the uh, little pointy parts that uh, flank the neck. So I got that done. Oh, my favorite tool. Oscillating, no, what is that thing called? I don't know, a sander. Orbital sander. Yeah, that's what it is. And more sanding. Gotta love it. You know, it, it's really important though, and I've mentioned this jokingly before, but sanding really is a huge part of building a guitar. Who knew? Now we all know. More sanding. It's time to start doing some coloring, but I'm not going to use crayons. I'm going to use a number of different things. I'm going to use some RIT dye and then also some trans tint dye. Various mixtures. I've done a little testing. I almost know what I'm doing, but probably not enough. Uh, once that's on I will and dry, I will spray the entire body with uh, Simtech uh, Easy Sanding Clear type material. It's a different brand, but I think it's actually made by Simtech. I could be wrong. So once the dye is on it, the whole thing will get a hard polyester urethane clear coat to help take care of all the, the basswood grain issues and all that other nastiness. I'll be able to sand it smooth and it'll be ready for base coat clear coat, which I'm using an automotive base coat clear coat again. In this case, I'm using coral red metallic for the bulk of the color, which will be on the sides and the back of the guitar body and kind of do a fade or a burst into the dyed top figure wood. I have done some testing of the RIT dye and the trans tint dyes and I almost know what I'm doing but not really. So we're gonna kind of wing it as we continue the next project. With um, some of the sanding behind us, it's time to add some color. And this is a RIT dye called Scarlet Red. And at this point, I mixed it 50-50 red dye and water, so equal parts. And it came out a little light. So I mixed up another batch. This is Scarlet Red Wine and Water. When I say wine, it's RIT dye wine color. And that's a little closer. That's more where I want it to be. Oh, there's more sanding again. After the dye dried out really well, I took the, uh, the orbital sander and knocked down everything a little bit and then followed it up by hand to make sure I had pretty much uniform sanding done across. It's looking pretty good, but it's not good enough. Let's try things again. Again, ample dry time in between uh, applying the dye and getting to sanding. And this is all just kind of the base work so I can do my top bright red trans tint dye work. And there I was using a heat gun to try and set the RIT dye into the wood fibers. So when I'm applying the trans tint I wouldn't be trying to lift or pull the uh, RIT dye out of the fibers. I don't know if that would happen. This is all an experiment. But man, I'm liking that color. That's looking good. I can just imagine some clear on it right now. Woo. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Right, at this point we are not going to do any sanding. The red dye is on the body. It's looking good. We're going to leave it alone. 
but I am putting together my exhaust fan system, which is a three gang, three, uh, what are they, 20 inch window or box fans. And we're gonna shoot on a coat of a Simtech uh, easy sanding sealer type material. It's actually a different brand, but I believe it is made by Simtech. And I'm using an LVLP paint gun for this with the biggest tip it has. I think it's a 2.0 tip and it sprays it really well. And here we go, another pretty heavy coat. Uh, this stuff is catalyzed, so it stays sticky for about 20 minutes and then all of a sudden it gets gooey and then it gets hard after that. But it's looking good, looking real good. I like it. Well, crap. More sanding to be done. This is the easy sanding sealer, so it goes pretty well. Again, using the hand palm sander there, it leveled this out really well. I was actually thinking I'd have to respray once I did this sanding, give it like one more coat of the, uh, the sanding sealer. But this turned out really well. There was like one little nick where the top veneers were put on and I was able to fill that with sanding dust and CA so there's no need to reseal the whole thing for one really small issue that uh, was easily taken care of without resealing the whole thing again and man there's just more sanding to do and sanding lots of sanding Got all the initial sanding of the easy sanding sealer done. I used 320 grit on an orbital sander, then also 320 by hand to finish off uh, everything. Get rid of all the little um, rough spots where the, the wood fiber was sticking up. I believe this is basswood, this light color wood on the side. This was uh, mahogany in the middle, but this is basswood. And it's a really soft fibrous wood that doesn't behave really well, I guess. Uh, we got that all sanded back nice now with 320 and I think we're ready for final color. Uh, that will happen next weekend because it's already 95 degrees in the garage and I'm melting as I'm talking to you right now. So before I do put color, final color and clear on it, I will hit this whole thing with 400 grit paper as a final finish sanding before final color and we'll be good. So that's about all we have on this. Uh, I'm gonna go inside where it's nice and cool. And that brings us to the end of yet another episode. We are moving right along though, and I wanna thank everybody again for hanging out with me. It's great having everybody join in and comment and leave their information. I like hearing from everybody. Uh, please ring the bell, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave comments. I really enjoy hearing from everybody and what you got going on. And until next time, take care of yourself and those around you. The microphone wasn't turned on. Huh. Huh. Let's try that again.